Welcome, awesome AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we're ready to embark upon really the final stages of Unit 7. And it's all about being able to solve a differential equation. And we're going to talk about the general solutions first, and then we'll slip into specific particular solutions uh, in some future videos. But by and large, the processes to do both are going to be very similar. This is something I think you're going to get very good at because you're going to do it over and over again. So you really have no uh, option but to get better because every practice problem is kind of the same. And it's also very important because there are a lot of points tied to this on the AP Calc exam. So believe in yourself. Let's take a look at topic six and seven from unit seven, examples one and two. So as you can see, the topics are broken apart into both finding general and finding particular solutions. And as I said before, this particular video is going to focus on the general solution. So what do we do? What is this idea of separation of variables? Because you may have noticed that text being pretty prominent in the titles of both of these two topics. Well, here's the situation. Up until now, you have only been able to solve two types of differential equations, and you've worked on this a little bit back in unit six. If the y prime is by itself, or the dy over dx is by itself, or a few times maybe the second derivative notation is by itself, you guys were off and running. You could take your integral and then just move accordingly to the function that you wanted to find. But in this section, we will now look at a more general strategy because now we won't necessarily have all of our variables by itself. Sure, you might have your derivative by itself like you did up here in this box, but what if you have x's and y's all kind of mixed together on the right side that we've never seen before? And so let's take a look at how to separate the variables here in example one. First of all, any time that you encounter the prime notation, I really want you to get out of that. Let's get out of this, this Lagrange notation. Sometimes it's referred to as Newton notation, depending on which country you're talking to, France or England. And we want to rewrite it as the nice Leibniz notation. So y prime is going to change his name to dy over dx. That's your first step. Make sure that you do that. Now, in the next step, we want to separate the variables. We only want y's on one side of the equation. We only want the x's on the other side. Does it matter? Yeah, it sort of does. The side that the dy is already in the denominator on is the side that you want the y's to be on. And the reason for that is that you don't really want this dx hanging around in the denominator. And you're going to be able to fix that very, very easily if you just simply multiply y over to the left side and multiply the dx over to the right side. Now, basically, we just cross multiply. You could think of it like that, and that works perfectly fine. You will score a point on the AP exam and on my exams if you can separate the variables. Hopefully, you're going to get more points than that. So the next step, you're going to integrate both sides. You're going to put an integration symbol in front of the left side and you're going to put an integration symbol in front of the right side. Now, there's a lot of hand waving about how we are able to do that. You could argue that, well, wait a minute, we're not really integrating both sides with respect to the same variable. And I get that. There's a way that you could rewrite this and integrate both sides with respect to x, but you're going to get the same result. For right now, I'm just going to let you take the liberty in knowing that if you do this integration operation in front of each side, we will retain the equality of our equation. And we're always going to be able to do that. Next up, take a couple of antiderivatives. When you integrate y with respect to y, you can use the power rule, which is going to give you y squared over 2. When you integrate 2x with respect to 2x, you'll get 2x squared over 2, also known as our good friend x squared. And then at this point, you have to add a plus c. <clears throat> well, you've got to add this plus c to one side or the other. And we really don't know which side that we want to put it on. You could put it on both sides. Doesn't mean that they're going to cancel because they are two different versions of c 
possibly. So what we're going to do is let the C's all sort of cohabitate together on the right side. So any C from the left side moves over to the right. Now, <clears throat> at this point, we could say that we're done. There's a lot of things that you could say about this problem. There's a lot of ways that you could rewrite it. And, and this is one of the ways. Another possibility is you could multiply both sides by a 2. So I'm going to call these our possible general solutions. So one way would be to multiply through by a 2. Now this is going to kind of blow you away. If you multiply through by a 2, you can do a couple of different things with that C. Yes, you could say 2 times C. Another thing that you could do is you could have the C chew up, absorb that 2 factor, and you could just write it as a C, and that's perfectly acceptable as well. And I know that's a little weird, but it's something that is done. Let's say that you wanted to get Y by itself. Now, this is where things get a little bit confusing. Yes, you would take the square root of both sides. And so it doesn't seem really confusing. You put a square root over the 2x squared plus C. But by definition of algebra, we would have to throw in the plus or minus there because we have indeed taken the square root of both sides. And by and large, we'll let that be. But one of the things that we talked about earlier in this unit is that when we ultimately solve a differential equation, we want the answer to be a function. And that's going to be really important. The problem with this question is that we weren't given an initial condition for which we could sketch the solution curve through to determine maybe which half of it is going to really be our answer. Because I think what we've got on our hands here is a hyperbola, and it's possible that most of you watching this video, maybe you don't see that, and that's perfectly okay. Don't worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and make a ruling here for our course that we're going to go ahead and put the plus or minus in here and say that that's okay because we just don't know what the initial condition is. But when I move on to the particular solutions, when we have a, an initial condition, a point, bear in mind we will only have functions at that point. All right, as we move through this, here's a little bit of advice, a little bit of help maybe on how to do some separation of variables that you can kind of look at this a little bit more closely at your own leisure, but sometimes you might have to do some manipulating like moving over a term by way of subtraction, subtracting the x squared to the right, and then you can see that multiplication of the dx could then take place. In a problem like number uh, two here in blue, you could do some very clever things like divide both sides by the sine of x, at which point the cosine divided by sine could become cotangent. And then after the y prime is written, as it should be, dy over dx, we multiply our dx over. Now, one of the parts here uh, in, in this next example it can be a little bit tricky when you've got more complicated things making up the sides of your equation. But by and large, most of the y's are already on the left side. All we need to do is divide the x over. That's why this x is in the denominator here on the right side. And then we can free up our dx to multiply over. So it's really important that you exercise good algebra skills because I don't want to alarm anybody if you don't separate the variables correctly, things can go south in a hurry. Depending on what result that you get, you could lose a lot more points. In other words, everything doesn't necessarily get graded with you in your mistake if you've done something that makes the problem a lot more simple than it needs to be. So be very careful about the separation of variables. Let's practice one more of these, shall we? We've got an example two, dy over dx equaling 4x cubed over the cosine of y. Well, the first thing that I noticed that I could multiply the cosine of y over to the left side. And then I could also multiply the dx over to the right side. And so that lands us right here. 
Now, generally speaking, I would allow students to put the integral symbols in that step so that you don't have to rewrite. I am going to go ahead and rewrite nonetheless for the purpose of having good notes here so that you can follow the path a little bit easier. All right, so let's anti-differentiate cosine. The integration of cosine is positive sine, right? Remember, if your integration answer does not start with C, just keep it positive. And the antiderivative of 4x cubed is x to the fourth. We'll put our plus C over on the right side. And then we kind of think about, well, what could we do with this? Well, one thing that we could do is certainly nothing. We could leave the problem like this. Um, it is nice if we can get y alone, but it's sometimes not very feasible. But in this case, let's say if you decided to take the inverse sine of both sides, it is certainly something that you could pull off fairly easily. And lo and behold, you've got yourself an answer. y is equal to the inverse sine of x to the fourth plus c. In some of our upcoming videos, what we're going to do is see some problems that involve particular solutions from here on out, which is more likely what you're going to see most of the time and certainly on the AP calculus exam. And in addition, I will also show you how to use your graphing calculator to check some of these answers if you so desire. Anyway, we hope this helps and we really want you to stick around because we have so many more great videos in store for you covering differential equations. So important coming up on the AP Calculus exam. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe and tune in for more. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.